Hi folks, welcome to this video on balance and stability. So this is from the biomechanics uh, section of your course. Um, there's a couple of phrases I'm going to keep referring to in terms of balance and stability. One is centre of mass and the other one is base of support. So what I've done is centre of mass, whoops, I just keep them in the right place. Centre of mass I've abbreviated to COM, okay, which you'll be able to see here. And base of support I've abbreviated to BOS, which I've abbreviated there. Now, centre of mass can also be referred to as centre of gravity, okay, which we've got written down here. Now, the thing about centre of mass is it's an imaginary point, but it is it's something that definitely exists. If you look at these diagrams here, this dot here that I'm just circling is the centre of mass or the centre of gravity on an individual. So it's the point at which all mass is distributed evenly. So everything up there has the same mass as everything down there. Everything that way has the same mass as everything that way, okay? But because it's not an actual thing that exists inside your body, your centre of mass or your centre of gravity can move. So in this diagram here, this man has put his arms up in the air, so his centre of mass has moved upwards ever so slightly. Now everything there is equal mass to everything down there. Equally, if he then starts to bend forward to touch his toes, his sense of mass or his sense of gravity can weirdly now exist outside of his body. Everything there is equally mass to everything there. So it is an imaginary point, but like I said, it, it does move. It's not fluid. It's not an actual thing that exists inside your body. Now, your base of support effectively is referring to your points of contact with the ground. So in this case, on all three diagrams, it's the, uh, the feet. That are providing the base of support. So when we're talking about balance and stability, there's a few things that we need to be aware of. Balance and stability is really, really important in a lot of sports. Every time you're changing direction, every time you're tackling something in rugby or something like that, you need to be in a balanced position or else you're going to get knocked over, you're going to fall over. People with bad balance get injured more because they fall, they put their arm out to break the fall and they, you know, they, they sprain the wrist or they break uh, one of the radius or the ulna or they dislocate a shoulder because they've fallen and put all the weight through their arms. So the general rule is this, the lower your centre of mass, the more balanced you are. So if we were to look at these three pictures here, this diagram here, this person will be slightly more balanced than these two here. This one is slightly more balanced than this person there, not by very much, but the lower your centre of mass, the greater the balance you have. Something else we've got is something called line of gravity. So the centre of mass directly being above the base of support leads to high levels of balance. So here, there's your centre of mass, there's your base of support. So there is a direct line straight down connecting them. So that is line of gravity. So this person will have higher balance. This person will have the same amount of balance because their centre of mass is directly above the base of support. But this person here might have slightly less balance. That that centre of mass, centre of gravity, isn't directly above the feet. It goes through maybe the toes, but doesn't go directly through the feet. So by leaning forwards, your centre of mass, centre of gravity, is slightly in front of your base of support, and therefore you're going to lack a bit of balance. Now the next thing is how wide. Whoops, sorry, if you can turn the laser on off. How wide or the width of your base of support? If this person was, to stay, if any of these pictures here, the people in these pictures were to spread their feet out to like shoulder width apart or more, they would have a wider base of support and they would, as a result, have more balance. If they're standing as it appears to be here with their feet together, they would therefore have a narrow base of support and that's going to lower their balance, going to have low levels of balance. Okay. And then finally, raising your sense of mass at takeoff for a jump means the body can remain in the air for longer. So come away from balance and stability here. If I can, you see when long jumpers or basketball players jump to do a slam dunk or something like that, long jumpers jump for the long jump, they'll often lift their arms in the air to jump. Well, that is going to raise the centre of mass higher up, and that means they're going to hang in the air for longer. So if we can manipulate our centre of mass and our base of stability, we can affect our balance, we can also affect how far we jump and how high we jump. So let's give this a bit of practical application, okay? So... How can we manipulate our sense of mass and our base of support to increase or decrease our stability? And do we want to decrease our stability? That's actually a question that does come up and something that we need to be able to answer. So if we look at these uh, four bullet points here. So number one, in no particular order, base of support. The wider our base of support, 
the greater our stability. So if you look at this rugby player here, the number 10 for Wales, what he's doing is he's widened his base of support. He's put his feet wide apart, and that's going to give him more balance and more stability. So when he tries and tackles the French player, he can do it from a more solid foundation. And then secondly, what the Welsh player is doing, he has lowered his centre of mass. So the higher the centre of mass, the less stability. The lower the centre of mass, the greater the stability. So if you imagine this, you know, this player here, where would this player's centre of mass be? He's probably going to be um, somewhere around there. Now, pardon my drawing and where that's actually come out, but, you know, it's not the best thing in the world. But because he's dropped his mass down, lower centre of mass, wider base of support. Now, the next one is line of gravity. So if I, again, draw some lines coming down here, look at that. There's the line there. If I just add where the base of support would be, remember, there's the base of support, nice and wide. That line of gravity, that centre of mass is direct, because he's got such a wide base of support, that centre of mass is directly above uh, his, his base of support. It's in line. And so, again, he's going to be in a very, very balanced position when he makes this tackle. And then finally, then, we've got the mass of the body, right? So if you haven't done them already, have a look at the uh, Newton's Laws of Motions videos that I've done. Thinking back to Newton's first law, the law of inertia, the greater the mass, the greater the inertia, therefore the greater the stability. Now that's why rugby players, men and women, spend time getting big in the gym. Not only does it create more muscle mass for more power, more strength into the tackle, but it makes sure that they have, have got really high levels of balance and stability when they're, when they're making the tackle. Now if you were to look at the French player, in contrast to the Welsh player, he's mainly only got one foot in contact with the ground. Okay, that foot's in the air. Probably that foot's just in the air at this moment in time. That foot's off the ground, so he's got a very, very small base of support. He stood very, very tall, so his centre of mass is going to be around about here. Okay? And, you know, he's not got direct line of gravity. Centre of mass isn't directly above the base of support. So when this Welsh player hits him, he's going to knock him down. He's going to put him on his backside, which is, is, you know, you can't always get yourself into a balanced position when you're about to be tackled. You know, he's probably looking for the handoff, which is why his arms are in the air, something like that. But that player is going to get knocked down onto the ground, which happens a lot in rugby. But this is the issue with centre of mass, base of stability, allowing you to make sure you're in a balanced or an unbalanced position. Now, here's a bit of a weird one. Uh, bear with me on this because it can come up as a question on the exam. Centre of mass and doing a high jump. Now, if you go back to any Olympic Games before the 1970s, this was the technique that was used when doing a high jump. It was sometimes called the straddle, they'd sometimes do the scissor kick. But here's the bar and the pull that you're trying to high jump over, and this white bit is your centre of mass. Right? So every high jump, uh, jumper in the world would, would adopt this technique or a variation of it. Then at some point in the 1970s, an American high jumper called Dick Fosbury came up with a technique and it's since been named after him and it's called the Fosbury Flop. Now, if you've ever done high jump, you will have been taught this technique here. What Dick Fosbury did, and he was the first one to do it, was jump over the bar backwards, so with his back facing down on the bar. And what you can see here is his centre of mass as he's clearing the bar actually goes outside of his body and under the bar. Now that's a bit of a weird concept to get your head around. His body goes over the bar, but his centre of mass passes under the bar. Because his body goes over in stages, first his arms, then his head, then his chest, then his torso, then his hips, knees and ankles, and he goes over bit by bit. So his centre of mass goes under the bar. Now what that means is, is that he can jump higher for less energy. Anyone trying to do this technique has to get their body and their centre of mass over the bar. He's got to get his, just his body over the bar and his centre of mass will pass under the bar. And as a result, as I've said, you jump higher for less effort and it must work because every high jumper in the world now uses this technique. So the final bit then is, are there times when you'd want to actually reduce balance and stability? Because everything we've done so far is about increasing balance and stability. 
Well, the answer is yes. There are incidents in times in sport where you do want to reduce balance and stability. I'm going to give you a couple of examples now. So if we look at this example here, okay, Johnny Wilkinson has got a very narrow base of support, one foot in contact with the ground. His centre of mass, even though he squats at the legs, is still quite high and there is no line of gravity. His centre of mass is not over his base of support. Now, why has he put himself into this position? Because with less balance, you have increased agility. So you can sidestep or swerve people more effectively when you are in a position of low balance, okay? So I will want to reduce my balance, I want to reduce my stability if I'm trying to sidestep or swerve an opponent. Another example here, if we look at this picture of Dean Asher-Smith doing sprinting, her centre of mass is way out in front of her, as you are told to do when you are sprinting. Her base of support is back here. So again, very small base of support, she's literally on her tiptoes. There is no line of gravity, that centre of mass is not above her base of support, but being in this unbalanced position allows you to accelerate quickly, okay? So in this case, less balance equals increase, increase <coughs> excuse me, acceleration and deceleration. So what you've got there is you've got what balance and stability is, how do you maximise balance and stability, and then where are the instances in sport when you actually want to reduce balance and stability with a couple of examples, okay? Hope you found this video useful, folks.